this exercise is going to be sending an email it's going to be can be used as a custom email manager we've got three columns here where we've got the email address of the client that we want to send to we've got the name of the person and then we've got the status so if we remove out those two statuses i've got my inbox ready and it's be going to these two email addresses we run the code it constructs html templated emails so this is just a basic template, but of course you can update it as needed. And then we've got the two emails that came in, the data populated from the spreadsheet and the email templated as we have within the HTML. So that's all coming up in this slide. Go ahead and open up your spreadsheet, add in some dummy data. We're gonna be using three columns. So email address, we're gonna need an email address. And this is the address that we're gonna be sending the email to the name of the recipient. And for tracking, we're checking to see if the email status has been sent. I'm using a bound script so you can access your script editor under extensions app script and that will open up the app script editor. And from here we can create our custom functions in order to accomplish our task. So we're going to create a function and it's going to be speak called send custom emails and create it just as you would any other function. And first of all, we need to select the spreadsheet that we're going to be interacting with. So using the spreadsheet app service, we're getting the active spreadsheet. And that's going to turn back the spreadsheet object. Now we want to select the sheet that we want to use. So of course, uh, spreadsheets can have more than one sheet. So the sheet that we're using is exercise one sheet. So we're going to refer to it by its string value name. So we select the spreadsheet object and then we get sheet by name and then we put in the string value of the name of the sheet that we're trying to select. I always use the logger just to make sure that I've collected the correct sheet object, there's no errors in the script, and then also to accept any permissions that you might need for running the code. So there we've got the sheet object selected, and we're ready to move on to the next step where we're gonna get the row. So this is gonna be the starting row, start row value. And we want to start on the second row because the first row is going to contain the header. So I like to add this in in case I want to add in a few additional headers or whatever else I need within the spreadsheet for tracking. Let's go ahead and we're going to get the rows. So we're getting the last row value, so the number of rows that we're getting. And that's going to be coming from the sheet that we're using. And then we're using the get last row and this is going to return back a value of the number of rows of data that we have within the spreadsheet so you can also output this into the logger so you can check that out and this should return back a value of four and we have a total of four rows we're starting at row number two so we need to do the calculation where we're subtracting the value for the headers so we can also set this by minus one and that should return back three rows of data. And that's going to correspond with the three rows of data that we have that we're trying to access and use in this exercise. And if you, of course, you add any additional rows, it will add that into the calculation. So this will dynamically select the rows. So we want to adjust the range and select the range that we want to use. So we need to select a range. This is going to be where the data is sitting. And we can call this data range. And now we've got the values that we can use in order to select the data range. So we only want to select specific data. So that's going to be within this range from the spreadsheet. So it's not going to matter if we add in additional content into it. We're only going to be selecting from the range that we're outlining here. So we've got our start row value, which is going to be row number two. We're starting at column number one, the number of rows that we are returning back. And it's gonna be in the number of rows. And we know we wanna return back the first three columns. So that's gonna get the data range. And you can use this to specify which columns you wanna return back. So this format won't matter if you add in additional values within D, E, F, G, and so on. So it won't change the data range because we've preset the number of columns that we wanna return back. So if you want to add in additional comments or whatever you need within these columns, you're able to do that. It's not going to return that data because we don't need it for the emailing out. So last but not least, we want to return back the data and get it as values. 
So we've got the range where the data is sitting within data range, and then we can get the values, and this is going to be returned back within an array format, and that allows us to utilize the data within our script. So I'll show you what gets returned back. So it's returning back just the data, the information that we want to use, just the three rows and three columns that we have. So next we want to loop through that data and going through the entire length of the data. So you can do this in a number of ways because this is an array. You can also use the for each to iterate through the number of items there within there and then return those back and do something with that. So this is going to return back a row. So the row is going to represent each line of data that we have within the spreadsheet. And again, I'm going to use the logger in order to log out what we have within the row. So this is returning back an array, and that's going to return back the array of information. And I can comment out the logger log. I don't need that right now. And we can get the data, as we can see within the execution log. We've got the data. So the first item within the array with index value zero is going to be the email address. And then the second one is going to be the name. And the third one is going to be checking to see if we've already sent the email. So let's go ahead and we're going to update the code where we're going to check to see if the email is sent. So we're going to grab, first we'll grab the email address. And this is going to be the email address of where we want to send to. And as we saw, that's sitting within row index value of zero. And we can also select what we want for the email sent. So we want to check to see if the email sent is going to be a Boolean value. It's true or false. So if we have some content in there, or if it says specifically email sent, which it does in this case, then we can use that value. So you can use it as a Boolean, or you can use it being more specific before you send out the emails. So we'll add in that condition that if email sent is not equal to email sent, if it, so it doesn't say email sent, then we want to loop through and we want to send the email. So just a quick update there. And that gives us the two rows that don't contain the email sent. So if we were to update any one of these rows, and we're going to update after we actually send the email, let's uh, run the code again. And that should only return back the one row. So that's exactly what we want. And now we're ready to send out the email to that row. And then we want to populate the data within that column so we don't send the person additional emails. So let's set up our message. And this is going to say, dear, and we can add in whatever we want here. I'm going to use the back ticks, so I can use a little bit more dynamic coding. And this is going to allow us to access the template literals. Back ticks are to the left of the one on most keyboards. And this is where we can select different values. So in this case, I want to select the value from row number one and add that in. So it's going to say dear whatever the name is. And then we can do the backslashes for a new line. And then whatever additional details you want there, uh, you can add into the message. Uh, let's also create a subject for the email. And uh, this can just say your custom email. And that will be in the subject of the email. So once we've constructed that, we've got everything we need. And we can use the mail app and send email. And we're sending it to the email address that we've selected and by the subject that we've got there. And then the value of the message that we're sending. So it's going to send that out. And now what we want to do is we want to set the value. So we want to get the range. So what we need is we need an index value. And that will give us the row value that we're currently looking at. Uh, so let's, before we do this, uh, let's, as we loop through, I want to show you how we can get the row value of each one of those and before we update those emails. So let's go ahead and we're going to calculate the row value. And this is going to be coming from the index value and we're adding two to it. And then we can use the logger log and we'll output the row value.
and then we can also underneath it we'll output the contents of the rows so that we can see what's contained within there and we're going to need the row value so we see that this is on the second row this is the third row and this is the fourth row so it's going to correspond with the value second third and fourth and this is going to allow us if we wanted to make some updates to that content we can just use this row value and update the content there accordingly and let's uh, go into our email so we did actually send that one email there uh, notice it didn't obviously update that but it did send it to the one row that didn't have the last column the third column marked so let's go ahead and we're going to update that third column so we select our sheet object we need to get the range so you always need a range of what you want to interact with and the range is just going to be a value for the row that we want to start at. So we've got that here where we've got the row value. And then we want to add update column number three. And what do we want to do in the column number three? We're going to set a value. And then the value that we're setting, so this is going to be expecting a string value. And we want to just write email sent. So whenever the email is sent, we want to send the email. And once we run this, we can read the spreadsheet app and just do a flush of the spreadsheet. And that will ap apply changes to the spreadsheet. So that will update the current spreadsheet, the active spreadsheet with the new email sent so that we don't send it again and it will update the, the spreadsheet with the new data. So try it out and now let's send out and there we've got all of that information. We've got another email that's sent to Jane Doe. And then now when we go in here, we see that that has been populated. So let's remove out those other two and we'll send the email out once again and make sure to go into our email inbox. And there we've got the John Doe using the message. And then we've got the Alex Smith value there that we also had within the spreadsheet. So we can go ahead and we can remove the logs because this is just for as we're building the application just to check the data that's being sent out. So what I also want to do now is uh, do an addition to this. We're going to use the email template. So it's going to be a new HTML file. So select add new file, select HTML and give this one an email template. So give it a meaningful name. And then when you open that up, this is going to open up the HTML page. And here, you, you can, as long as you're sending an HTML email, you can use this and add in the different values uh, as HTML. So we're going to create HTML from this existing email. We want to pass in some parameters and some values into there. So that's where we're going to be using the create the name and passing in the name value into it. So let's go ahead and create the this will create a really basic HTML email and we want to populate it with a scriptlet so we want to add in the name and then we can just close off the paragraph there then here you can just have your whatever your message is and I'm not going to spend too much time on that uh, you can customize the message as needed and uh, we'll just add it in so that we can have a signature so I'll just add in my name there to sign it and that's it. So a very simple HTML email there. And of course, we can apply styling afterwards as needed. So let's update this. Uh, so we're going to copy this and uh, update. So we'll call this 2 uh, so that we have both versions of the script. And we can see the changes. So we're going to just update the send custom emails so that we can send it to that HTML template. So all the rest of the script up until here is the same. And this is the only difference is here where we're out constructing the message. So we want to create an HTML message. So let's scrap that. It's, uh, this is going to be a custom function that we need to create. So let me add that in. So it's going to be create HTML email function. We're going to select the name and we'll pass in. This allows us to pass in an argument into this function and it's creating a template. So we're using the HTML service create and we want to create a template from file so we've got the email template file so this is expecting a string value of the template and just make sure that you spell it the same you don't have to specify html at the end it's already going to know that this is the template that it's going to look for 
and for the template object we want to update the name and send the name in as the object and then return back the template and use evaluate in order to add in and update the HTML with the name and we want to get the content back. So I'm going to comment out the send email there and update this, create the message and the message that we're updating, we're going to send in the name value there into the message and we'll output the message within the logger log. So we can see what we can expect from the messages in the log and also test out our code, make sure everything is working properly. So we want to create the HTML from the email. We're using the templated service. So this needs to be updated to be the scriptlet format. So don't forget the equal sign. So that will allow us to evaluate whatever the value is here that we've got within the scriptlet for the name. So that will update the name value with the name that we're sending in there and set the name that we've got. And you can also add on other object values as needed. And then here for the name, the name is actually going to be what's contained. And I'm going to just remove out one of them. So we'll send an email to the Jane Doe. So it's contained within the second column of the row item. So we need to update that as well. So that will send the name value in there. And then we also need to update the way that we're sending the email. So because we want to send it as an HTML email, so it's going to require a different structure for the email. So we've got the message and I'll just uh, copy that out before we send it. We'll just, we'll log the message out. So we've got a subject, so that's not changing. And the message, it's going to be contained as an HTML email. So we want to, instead of emailing out like this, what we want to do is we want to send it as options. So let's set up a bunch of options here. And this is going to be within an object format. So we're going to send the email within an object format. So who we're sending the email to. So we've got that one email address. We've got the subject, and that's within the subject variable. And then we've got the HTML email that's within the message. So selecting the HTML body. And that's going to just contain the result for the message value there. So let's uh, try this out and see where we're sending the email. So it's going to construct the email there. It's updated the Jane Doe. Looks like we've got an extra space in there for whatever reason. Okay, let's uh, look at that again and save that. And that might have just been the way that it looked. And it did populate this. So let's clear that. And it is updating the spreadsheet. So nope, it actually wasn't an extra space. So update that again. And I think we're ready to send the email so we can get rid of the log. We have to clear out the email sent to whatever one we want to send the email to. And let's run the code and we'll send the email and see what comes into our inbox. So there's our HTML email and we need to send it as an HTML body. So it's still coming through as uh, regular text. So we need to update this. So it's sending it out as HTML body and the message object. And it's just going to update here the options. And this will, instead of sending out uh, a text email, we're going to send it out as an HTML email. So that's why the HTML wasn't showing up properly within the inbox email. So there's our second email. And now we've got the proper structure for the email. And if you update any of this template stuff here, uh, this will also update. So if we add an H1 here, clear out another one from the column. And we'll go back and run the code again. This is just to demonstrate that we can have different types of HTML and it'll show up because it's an HTML email now and it's not going to be a text email. So this gives us a little bit more uh, presentable emails that are being sent out in this application. So go ahead, give it a try. You can also add the customizations as needed.